My name is Adam Scott, I live in South Ayrshire, Scotland and for the last six years I've been teaching guitar at Ferguson's Academy of Music. One of my favourite parts of teaching is hearing people's stories to understand why they come for lessons and what their goals are. This helps me to plan the lessons and to help them work towards their future aspirations. Some of the common goals I often hear from students are to help them pass their exams at school write their own music to eventually play in a band, or to simply just have fun. However, I remember one student in particular who had a very different story that I quickly became very attached to. His name was Stephen Campbell, a 46 year old musician, tattoo artist and guitar player who experienced septicemia in his blood at the age of 37 and through this suffered from severe memory loss. Through attending music lessons, Stephen's wish was that he could relearn the musical skills that he had now forgotten. Stephen attended music lessons with me for a while, however decided to stop attending in November 2021 due to personal reasons. Recently, I've been reflecting on Stephen's story, and on February the 11th, I decided to reach out to him for a general catch up to see how he was keeping, and to request that he share his story for everyone to hear. Any better? Is that started? Yeah. Definitely yeah. like that's us. Growing up was fabulous, what I remember. Musical background, my dad got me into everything. He was Daft and Hendrix, Zeppelin. I get treated to a Squire Stratocaster and a Fiesta Red, I think it was. It was a bright fucking red, it was just... But it was a new guitar with a wee Squire amp. I came along with it, it was just fabulous. I used to take the knees up my jeans, sliding across the carpet like Pete Townsend and things like that. My dad just to come up to the room and just he's turn that noise down, it's just noise. And that's it. But eventually it's would well, could you play this, can you play that? And eventually it would wait to get down to, which was my now stepmother's house, to the point it was late in going run a few times. I just it kicked off and yeah. I would never be without my guitar. Everywhere I went, it went with me. I still have my original picks from childhood. My very first ever strap. Still have it. Yeah, it went great. And then nine years ago happened. Well, nine years ago, I was building the house that my boys live in, I would have been 37, 38, they're thereabouts. And it was a, basically a whole house conversion we were doing, it was an old house, last time it was touched was 1947 according to the newspapers that was under the carpet when we were doing it. So it was just basically a whole rebuild from the inside out and she wanted underfloor heating. So I was doing a hammer and bolster, chiseling up the concrete. And I cut my hand, a nick more than anything. It's a tiny wee scar just next to the crease in the thumb. And as the days passed, it felt as if I was getting the flu more than anything. And on the Sunday morning, I couldn't get out of bed. But it just from the neck down, I was pretty much disabled. I remember lying in bed, just being so, so thirsty. And I just wanted a glass of water. And that was it. I crawled through the kitchen. I remember climbing up the washing machine to get a glass of water and it never happened. You know, I just slumped down and then my last thought was, fuck it. And I woke up four or five days later in Cross House and the world was white. It transpired, I developed septicemia from the cut and I get put in a medically induced coma for a few days which induced cognitive amnesia and basically it was a year or two years of relearning everything from speaking, reading, writing. I had no knowledge of even playing guitar let alone even owning one. 
I had no knowledge of anything at all. Uh, so relearning everything again was difficult. I always had that craving. Something was always there. It was just always that familiarity, but every time I picked it up, there was nothing. It was as if the nerve from my brain to my left hand wasn't there. It was numb. Well, how did you not click? Do you know, you knew these things. When did you forget them? Stephen's story made me think about my role as a teacher and the impact it has on people's lives. His whole demeanour changed as the days went past as we spent some time talking and sharing stories about our love for music. After visiting the local record store, Stephen shared with me the Biffy Clyro performance that opened the door in his mind and resurrected his craving to play the guitar again. He said, no, I don't watch that one, watch the 2014 one from Tina Park. He says, it's phenomenal, absolutely amazing, you need to watch that. I was like, Christ, I've never seen that one. So I put it on, um, it was different people, I think. It was the first song, what was it, that golden rule, the second one. For some reason, Jesus Christ, this is good. I'm like, I've just got this urge to pick up my guitar. I've just got it. So I, I put it on, I'm just sitting farting about, and I'm like, something's not right here. Do you know, it's, the tuning's away to buggery. Let's drop it. And for some weird reason, I thought, I'm going to drop it to a D, and my ear just rung. Well, that's a D. Uh, a D, yep, that's us. No, something's just not right, it's still too sharp. Let's drop it all a wee bit more. And apparently it pays in a C sharp. It hit perfectly, something just rung. So I'm like, right, what's he doing? Bar chords, leaving bar chords, he's just one finger on it. And I was playing pretty much to the whole concert, a split second, or a second behind what he was doing. I had no idea how to do it but it was happening, things were starting to happen. And that was the night I thought, I need to learn how to play guitar properly. I've got this bug again. After discussing Stephen's past with him and sharing stories of our love for music, it seemed there was a connection between us and it sparked inspiration and friendship. Stephen was very open about his story and discussed his condition freely. However, he was still very anxious about playing the guitar again since stopping lessons. After visiting his home one night and taking a trip through memory lane, we went through the old guitar magazines that he used to read before the septicemia. Whilst I was deep in reading one of the articles about Jimi Hendrix, I heard a quiet guitar sound coming from the other side of the room. And as I lowered the magazine from my line of vision, I then saw it was Stephen playing. The cameras were not recording and I asked if Stephen would feel comfortable playing along with me and we could film it. He was hesitant at first, but then this happened. stood in the comfort of his home. I held my breath and wondered how he would react playing in front of a camera. It turned out to be a very beautiful moment. It's probably improved my life, rather than make it a hindrance. I like my life. I was, I'll change a few things in it, but it's, it was almost like a time machine. I've never changed anything, but I've no bad memories. So I have none. I have only snippets, and it's only what really matters. 
if they went through the same thing I went through, I'd say just forget about what you can't remember and just enjoy the now because you've hit the reset button. You've been given a second chance. Live it, enjoy it. Enjoy the sunrise, enjoy the sunset because you were lucky. You were lucky.